At UCT um, and in the libraries, we aspire to maintain our position as a leading academic library firmly located in Africa and whose services and facilities and expertise are recognized not only regionally within the Western Cape, but nationally and on the continent and internationally. And we want to be known for our quality and our innovation and sector leadership. And today's launch is about celebrating a milestone in that innovation and sector leadership, that of the Institutional Data Repository. As part of the university's strategic plan, um, they have a very strong strategy around research and internationalization. And a good part of that is about making UCT's research visible and discoverable and that it can be found and can be used. And as a library, we play a very central part as a, as a scholarly service in that role. And we do it in many different ways. We do it through open access. We have done it through significant research collections, through significant special collections, many of which are in analog form, increasingly digital. And more recently, we've entered into this world of intensive research data. And as I say, we're finding our feet in this, but we took the brave step within our strategic plan to say we actually would want to implement research data services. And part of that is to have a data repository where you can archive data. And it's all very well putting this in a plan, but it's another thing to turn it into something that is tangible and you can actually say to your research community, this is for you, this is your tool. And that, I think, is where the innovation and the leadership today, because I'm very proud that of the team within the libraries and the digital library services, and we'll come to that just now, who have taken what was a concept, you know, directors and managers come up with all sorts of good ideas, but it actually takes specialists and experts and people with a lot of commitment uh, to turn it into something that can be used by an academic and a research community. So I think that's why we're here today, and an important part of this journey and this step is that we are also part of a national project, which Professor Bahane will talk to and tell you about just now. And this data repository is absolutely instrumental. It's like a motor car without wheels. The wheels are absolutely critical to the national project and contributing internationally. So this celebration is very much a milestone. It's very much about sector leadership. Um, and I do believe that we are the first academic library to get the repository up, running, and fully available now to the, the research community. I know there are other libraries in the region who are close, uh, will have already also got um, to the point where their repository is ready to go. But as I say, we are now going public with um, repository with a name, it's got personality, um, etc. This repository serves up researchers who are in need of a repository to store and openly disseminate their data that support their published research findings. Um, the repository is serviced by, by, in terms of our research data management policy and it provides online access to supplementary data, research data files and links to their respective scholarly publications. So they might have their scholarly publications elsewhere online and this data repository will link their data together to, to their scholarly publications wherever they are, whether they are thesis or, or general publications published elsewhere or in, and hosted on other platforms such as our open UCT. Why did we choose Fitshare? What is Fitshare? It's an online platform uh, where you can upload your data that supports your, your, your research uh, or that constitutes uh, a research output and you get a DOI, so you get a persistent identifier which in this case is then also tracked to the institution. So the DOI contains in our case a UCT somewhere. So it also allows us as an institution to see what our research output is from our researchers and it enables you to also get quite a lot of control over uh, how that research is disseminated. So you, you make it as open as possible and as closed as necessary. So uh, it, it doesn't mean you have to now make everything openly available, but you, your DOI 
you get and you can then control whether some things are, are um, downloadable or whether people have to email you first to maybe have a look at it, etc. Uh, and there are a host, host of further benefits to it, but essentially that's the idea. It's national and it's international. So, um, you know, in terms of the drivers, we, we, we've got basically sticks and carrots uh, um, behind us and in front of us. And perhaps starting with the sticks is the compliance with, with various mandates and policies. And, um, and one of the key ones for us uh, all in South Africa is the NRF Open Access Statement from 2015, which we've all been trying to, <coughs> especially from the library side, trying to get our heads around how to comply with, because suddenly uh, NRF fun funded researchers, uh, students, etc., have to make their data openly, accessi openly accessible. Uh, and we needed a mechanism to actually support that mandate. And that was one of the really big drivers. And then, of course, more and more journals and institutions in general are starting to develop policies and mandates around open access data. So this will en enable us to, to at least help uh, compliance with that stick side of things. Yeah. But essentially, the replication and validation of research results is, is one of those um, things that actually led to uh, you know the mandates that we were talking about on the stick side but if, if you can actually uh, have your uh, research results replicated and validated by other researchers that will also increase your citations in future it will increase the, the uh, public perception and the specialist perception of your research as being particularly valuable so um, that's a key one. Then the efficient, efficiency in terms of transparency and democratic control is very, very important, especially in a country like South Africa, where you can imagine that as there are more and more open data sets, uh, the public will actually see a benefit uh, from, from that. And it is actually a public good. It's publicly funded, so it should be considered a public good. Uh, the same goes for the next points around public disclosure and engagement, as well as economic benefits and then back to the global benefits when we start to see data sets across the world on platforms like these starting to actually interact with one another as data and um, as the data is being used, reused, shared uh, in different ways and connected with one another through further researches, uh, um, research outputs. And of course, this is about data that's used in the publications, in the papers that are published. But an open access institutional data repository enables researchers and institutions to make research data discoverable, accessible, intelligible, accessible, interoper interoperable, citable, shareable, reusable, in short, makes it fair. And, and that's why we are delighted to be the first ones to use this. But, but feature for institutions, why, why didn't we go for the free option? I mean, we are in austerity, people, we had voluntary surveillance packages last year. Why spend money? Why can't we just go free? It's actually a really good question. Um, <coughs> this is not at all uh, prearranged, this, this, <laughs> this little tete-a-tete. -tete. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is, of course, Fixture.com and many... I, I have to say, I have to ask that question because I just got here, right? So. So I just, when I came here, they had already decided to fix share. So it's a real question. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't have money. Why can't we just? No, it's, it's an absolutely valuable question. Um, and we had to ask ourselves that too um, over the last year and a half that we've been investigating all of this. And you know, it's, it's quite complex and it's, everything is a mouthful, you know, open access institutional data repository and research data management and all these things that are, uh, sort of not very approachable in terms of all this terminology, but it's actually quite simple. Fixture.com, everyone in the world can use, uh, sign up to create a profile. There, there are a few drawbacks though. You have only a limited amount of space and you cannot increase that space. You can't go afterwards and say, I'm happy to pay a bit more and won't you give me another few gigabytes of, of space? It just doesn't work that way. It's the same um, also with regard to um, the DOI that you get. You can't retrospectively get a DOI from the free service that links you to your institution. <clears throat> so 
that won't work in terms of fulfilling some of the requirements. So um, those two are real knockout um, arguments already. But then further from that, through using Fixture for institutions, rather than allowing or encouraging people to sign up to the free Fixture.com, we actually get also curation. So we can actually assign curators to um, help with uploading the data sets <coughs> Excuse me. And, <coughs> and ensure that sensitive data isn't accidentally published or um, providing some sort of review function to ensure that the metadata is thorough uh, and, and additional optional uh, research data management support. Also, we are able to then customize the, the interface, so uh, showcase department data with group-specific branding, uh, we can also impersonate uh, those researchers who are perhaps too busy in their day, and there are those. Uh, we produce huge amounts of output, but don't want to get down to the nitty-gritty of managing it themselves. We can actually assign people to, uh, to manage their data for them. Uh, there's even another slide to, to, to say we, we're able to then say uct.fiction.com, we're able to brand it. As a, as a UCT platform and um, we can uh, we can set custom licensing options on the free se section you only get CC0 and CC BY for, for, for many data sets that's actually not sufficient uh, we can actually control what kinds of licenses users can select or advise on that selection and then also very importantly we're working with the Fixture team on a daily basis we're um, we're working with them on Basecamp and via email and via phone and actually they're going to come to visit us physically next month. Um, and we, we're actually influencing the, the way this product is being developed forward. And as a library, that's a huge privilege and we're already actually seeing the benefits of that. They take our feedback very seriously and they're a team of 30 or 40 highly uh, sought after developers, something which we as an individual institution or any South African individual institution, we wouldn't be able to um, put that much human resources and finances into developing a product further. So yeah, there are some, some answers about why not to go with the free version. Yeah. Uh, we, we held this competition to name our institutional uh, data repository and we published the call on, on social media and elsewhere on UCT platforms and we had many submissions, over 45 submissions, very creative, fun, and, and really interesting submissions from students and all sorts of people from the UCT community. Um, we had fun looking at them um, and we finally made a decision. Unfortunately, the winner is not here uh, to join us, but the person who won named it Ziva Hub. So Ziva Hub um, came from Tandeka Chahore, and the, the, the tagline, you call it tagline, right? Is Open Data UCT. So we went with that, because Ziva is a, is a Shona name for knowledge, I think, right? Um, to know, yes, to know, but it's Shona. And one can ask, why did we go for a Shona name? I mean, we, we are not just a South African institution, we are an African institution, and we wanted to foreground our African identity. But besides that, we wanted a catchy, short name that everyone can remember, that's vibey and, and to the point, uh, and also indicates what, what the platform is about. So, so Ziva caught that for us, and of course, Hub is a good association to make since several other hubs um, uh, are already in good use here at UCT. So we thought Ziva Hub, as suggested or proposed by Tandeka, is a good option to go with. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ziva Hub it is, and uh, our winner is Tandeka Shihori.